chosen to plant at their meeting Tuesday. Plant Vocals Unit 3 is now serving customers in Georgia. It's the first newly constructed nuclear unit in the U.S. in more than 30 years and can power an estimated 500,000 homes and businesses. Once all four units are online, the Burke County site will be the largest generator of clean energy in the nation. Well, business has been booming for new developments at the Evans Town Center. News Channel 6's Hannah Latier joins us live now to tell us what they've been seeing so far and to give us updates on the future. Hannah. Thank you, Brad. Multiple businesses have opened up in the area in the last few weeks, and owners and developers tell us that so far, turnout has been better than expected. Mirror Infusion Kitchen's second location just had a soft opening in the Evans Society Center. They already have regulars coming in to try their new menu items, and the manager is excited for their grand opening in mid-August. They all love our new location. It's closer, we have a bigger space, it's more comfortable. We have a new apartment coming, new hotel, and new farmer's market. I think this area is growing. The developer of the building that is home to the restaurant and the proposed Tempo by Tolton Hotel behind the center tells us the project is coming along well. We uh, came to an agreement with the county and they're finalizing for the purchase sale agreement. Purchase sale agreement will be uh, signed off hopefully by the end of the week and then we start our six month due diligence period where we assess the land and engineering to see if it's feasible to actually build a building on that property. Southern Time Clothing is expected to be open by the end of August and Elements Massage has seen high demand. Elements Massage has been a nice addition to our complex and we're very excited and, uh, to see things go forward. Uh, they are actively looking for more massage therapists to fit the need that we have in our area. And down the road in the Maybaum building, the Alumni Cookie Dough and Rooted Coffee House duo has become a big attraction since they opened at the end of June. You can see the people in the background. This is exactly what we kind of had envisioned when we opened this space and had Rooted come in as well was the parents and the kids both having something in one space. There will be a blood drive here tomorrow at the Society Center in partnership with Shepherd Blood Center. I'll have more information at WJBF.com. Live in Evans, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. Thank you, Hannah, and it is time now for our first check of the forecast. Detail with your forecast in just a few minutes. Jenny Bradley. Tim, thank you. A new app developed at Augusta University is designed to help pregnant and postpartum women catch preeclampsia early. News Channel 6's Rena Padubo shares one mom's story who says the new program saved her life. This women's clinic in Jefferson County helps pregnant women and new moms track their blood pressure. And for Chantel Walker, it was the education she needed to act fast. The second time mother gave birth to her son in June. Days later, she noticed an elevated blood pressure. Armed with tools from Augusta University's prenatal center in Louisville, all spelled out in the Vita RPM web app, she knew to head to the hospital. That move allowed her to get the help needed for preeclampsia, something the remote pregnancy and postpartum monitoring app keeps her on the lookout for constantly. By the time I made it to triage, it was like 224 over 100, which I was shocked because I had never, I have never up until today seen my blood pressure that high. If a mom enters a blood pressure above normal threshold, she gets um, follow-up questions on those five preeclampsia symptoms. Whether or not she answers yes to any of those symptoms, uh, she gets a follow-up notice that her blood pressure is high and she needs to contact her provider. Vita RPM also tracks postpartum depression, which can last up to one year after giving birth. Now, Dr. Vernon says her goal for the web app is to have it work across Georgia and nationally. In Jefferson County, Renette Dubose, WJBF News Channel 6. Aiken County Public School District now offers restaurant-quality breakfast and lunch at no cost to students. Tiffany Hobbs tells us about the unique benefits of the new program. Thank you, Jenny. Through a partnership with Chartwells and the Community Eligibility Provision, Aiken County Public School students will enjoy chef-inspired and carefully curated dishes that will foster lifelong learning. 
Employees in Aiken County Public School District's food service department have spent the summer enhancing their culinary and customer service skills. Now that school is back in session, students will enjoy a variety of free, nutritious meals for breakfast and lunch. School food service coordinator Polly Payinghouse tells us their goal is to provide nourishment to students that will help them succeed in the classroom. We were able to offer richer quality food, chef-inspired menu items, items that students like as we're listening to them, we're making sure we have those on the menu for them because we feel that every child deserves a meal, breakfast and lunch, every day. And we want to provide that for them because we know that we are developing leaders in our schools these days. Paying House tells us the work doesn't end here. The district plans to get feedback from students and further develop their program. For more information on the Aiken County Public School District's new food service program and healthy nutrition, you can visit us at WJDF.com. Brad, Jenny? Tiffany, thank you. With fall sports right around the corner, the South Carolina High School League says it's taken steps to keep athletes healthy. Here's Jason Raven. Officials here at the State High School League say winning isn't everything and player safety and wellness is their top priority. They hope with this new role, more athletes in South Carolina will be safer when they take the field. Well, this year, the South Carolina High School League joined at least two other state high school sport associations with a position like this. But Tim Kenny is the new league director of health, safety, and wellness. He has been a certified athletic trainer in South Carolina high schools for more than 15 years. Now, Kenny will oversee the medical aspect of the league help schools implement best practices for their student athletes. He says there will be a focus on all aspects of health, including mental health. So really my, my directive, my vision for this role is to make sure that all of our member schools have uh, access to the best health care uh, and, and that we can provide here in South Carolina, have access to the information, uh, anything that can help them to keep our athletes safe. That's really the ultimate goal uh, of this position is to make sure that they're safe. South Carolina High School League Commissioner Dr. Jerome Singleton says previously assistant commissioners would oversee health and safety for their respective sports. In Columbia, I'm Jason Raven. Early voting is underway in Aiken County. 